Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel, my name is Kinga and this is one kind of a bowl. Ah, this dark hair feels very different when I'm filming. Um, today we are going to be talking about cruelty free and a lot of vegan as well, perfume. And uh, it's a tough subject because still when you go into any shop like a, in a supermarket or like a big Sephora or any perfume shop all these perfumes like Armani, Chanel, Bulgari, all those beautiful very known well-known scents they're all tested on animals that these companies test so the only one that's actually in the shops widely and it's vegan and cruelty free is Stella McCartney so thank you so much Stella uh, we do appreciate that um, it's really amazing um, and then when it comes to Stella's perfume I own one and that's this one it's a very very beautiful little bottle it's called Stella Pop and this is definitely not a mediocre or like just normal, usual kind of scent. Uh, it's very quirky, very different and not for everyone. But I think it's kind of love it or hate it for many people. I like it, <laughs> so I'm not making sense myself. But uh, it is... It opens with like a very very juicy green tomato leaf scent which I personally love and but it's, there is a lot of sweetness in the scent that comes from flowers I think it's mostly tuberose uh, mainly based around the tuberose which is a very strong white flower scent and the tomato leaf which you can imagine it's quite a big and risky clash I'll say but it's something very unusual about this clash so it opens with very fresh tomato leaf and I really like it and then it dries down to this kind of um, in the middle kind of scent when you can smell the sweetness of the flower and, and it, it goes a bit minty to me um, personally I don't like that face that much but then it dries down to a lovely sandalwoody kind of sweet, very cozy really scent with a little bit of freshness. So um, yeah, I really wanted to mention that because that's the only one of like mainstream perfume that's actually vegan and cruelty free. Uh, but yeah, so it's a like for me, not love, but it's a like. I like it a lot. I like it too. Okay, so let me tell you um, how it was the sense for me. I'm not sh sure how it was for you and what's your story. I think everyone has their own unique story with perfume and when they started using perfume and they evoke a lot of memories. I remember some summer holidays by the scent and that's really magic um, but I used to up until I was uh, in my 30s I used to own usually one or maybe two scents and I would just use it up and then repurchase the same one or get something else but usually I was like staying around the same area of scents but I was not very happy about those scents being obviously from the companies that test on animals and I started looking and um, my first perfume that I really really fell in love with uh, when it comes to uh, cruelty free is Glossier you and I love it so much it's absolutely my favorite I've this is my second bottle but before this one because it's quite pricey 
before this, before my first bottle, I bought, I think I bought Tester, like a mini one uh, on the internet twice and at, at the beginning I wasn't sure but I was like oh, do I like it maybe I don't oh, it was like scratchy at the beginning for me a little bit but then when it kind of like sank in with my chemistry of uh, my body I just it just my favorite absolutely favorite scent and I get a lot of compliments wearing it this is my second bottle now. I usually wait for Glossier to do a 10% discount. Sometimes they do, like 10% on everything. So, and this scent is like literally, you can't really explain. The official ingredients are like powdery notes, iris, and musk, I think, or just musk. But it's just something amazing. When you smell it from the bottle, it's quite metallic and it's quite like metal. The metal meets flowers, if that makes any sense. But when you spray it and when it mixes with your body chemistry, it becomes your scent. That's why it's called you. So I don't really know how it smells on other people, but I know for me, it's just, it, it's very uplifting, it's uh, very empowering, but it smells really clean. It smells clean but invigorating, but not soapy invigorating, but rather it's really hot, so it's really musky. I think that's what I'm looking for here. It's musk. Uh, that's the dominant one, but like I say, it mixes with your chemistry and then it's probably different on the one and slightly different on anyone. Um, I know this one is used by many girls to enhance fragrances, to enhance a uh, sense of other fragrances, so if you are into layering, go for it. Personally, I love this one on its own so much that I don't even feel the need to experiment with it like that, but you can give it a try, I guess. Um, this one is uh, cruelty free. It's not vegan. Why it's not vegan? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm sorry, but uh, on the Glossier website, it says it's not vegan because it contains uh, like a um, the layer of um, a wood that's from a tree that that the specific wood can contain some very small little bugs and that's why they mentioned that it might not be vegan. So I think that's really sweet of um, Glossier to be so transparent. So yeah, there's nothing else, no, no beeswax, uh, no nothing else that comes from animals apart from potential little tiny little bugs that live in the part of the tree that some of this scent is derived from. So yeah, um, let me tell you, I wanted to tell you the story of, uh, I don't know if it's even interesting, but let's give it a go. Um, why I became so crazy about scent. So I used to own one and I wasn't really like putting a lot of thought into it. Like I loved my perfume, but that was it. When I had my bottle, I didn't really think much about it. It was my scent and I would use it every day until it's over and then I'll get another one. Um, but one day it changed. And then it changed because I went to a party, I had a little bit of a drink, not that much, like some people say, oh my god, you were um, so drunk, uh, that's probably why, that's not fair, because even if I was very drunk, um, I don't think anyone should judge me, I wasn't, I had about three glasses of red wine that night, and I was in central London when I fell down the stairs and I cracked my head open. Uh, so that was not 
very great experience. I had a concussion. Uh, I had stitch, stitches uh, here in my head. And um, when I was healing, I noticed at some point, I don't know how many days after the accident, but I noticed I was trying to smell something. I was trying to smell my perfume and I know. I noticed that I don't smell anything. I can't smell anything. And then just frantically I was trying to get any other things like creams and other perfume and like body sprays to to check if I can smell and then I realized I don't have a sense of smell anymore. And that wasn't great and then I panicked a little bit. I started reading about it. Um, it said that it might come back or it might not come back and we never know because um, brain injuries are not really that well examined by the medicine so the medical field so I went to doctors to ask it was actually a few months after the accident and they said the same they say you know you can get it back but you might not and uh, I really I was really hoping to get it back and the moment I started smelling things it was very gradual when I started smelling things um, I just got obsessed with scents just completely obsessed I was on fragrantica.com every single day it's like a website with a lot of um, descriptions that so people upload their own descriptions of different perfumes so I'll link it down below for you people can write amazing things about perfumes like it's like poetry it's really nice to read um, and I just I just loved it and I was just started really collecting you can say I started collecting perfumes I was uh, hunting for a low price that was like three four years ago I would hunt for a good price and then I would get the perfume I wanted but the guilt that I felt even back then uh, years ago I just couldn't do it anymore sorry guys I need a drink cheers Mm. I love it. Kombucha. It's really good for you apparently. It's not alcoholic. Some people think that kombucha is an alcoholic drink. It's not. It's a, It's like a tea that's gone bad <laughs> and they sell it in like bottles. There we go. It looks like this and yeah it's really good for you. It has the uh, good bacteria for your gut. Okay, now back to perfume. So, yeah, I felt really, really guilty. Um, so I just decided to only buy cruelty-free perfume from then on. So, for now, I was I was just using these two scents um, that I just shown you. Uh, Glossier You and Stella McCartney Pop. Of course, I was still trying to use up my old perfume uh, if I didn't sell them because I sold a lot. But if I still have some non cruelty free perfume, I obviously do not throw them away. I either use them up if I love them or I sell them. So, I was hunting for more <laughs> and I'm not saying I want to have a huge collection of scents um, anymore because I don't think there is a reason for it but having maybe up to five scents I think it's fine because it depends on the mood, on occasion, um, on the time of year as well. So, I discovered a um, brand called Dolma. They call Dolma Vegan Fragrances. They're all vegan and cruelty free and made in England. And I bought two. I bought Anahita, 
don't know if you can see, I think it's here that you can see. And I bought Compassion. Uh, I got the little ones. These are 10 are the 10 millimeter milliliters. Yeah, I think they're 10 each. Yeah, 10 mil. So you can give them a proper try before you purchase a big bottle. I think they have tiny little testers. They have this size and then the 30, the 50 and the 100. So there's a lot to choose from. And these are glorious. Um, I personally fell in love with Anahita. It's something so special. Um, I don't know, it's something so special about this perfume. It's flowery and a little bit citrusy, I think, but mostly flowery. And Yalang Yalang, there we go. That's the, the secret of this, I think. It's just so calming. It, there is one note in this perfume that makes me just feel like everything's gonna be okay. I don't even know how to say it. Like, if you go to yoga and they, when you meditate and when you have to imagine your safe place, this is like my safe place smells like. I'm not joking. I know it sounds a bit well, but it's so beautiful. It stays on my hair very long. It doesn't stay on the skin uh, that long, but it stays on the skin for a few hours and then it stays on the hair for like hours and hours and I wake up and I still smell it on my hair. So definitely great longevity. Um, let's see what Dalma actually says on the website. Can you see me still? Yes. Let's see what they say on the website about it. Um, mm -mm -mm. They have quite a lot actually to choose from. A lot of different ones. And they have men perfume as well. Anahita, women's vegan cruelty free perfume. So they say that Anahita was a Persian goddess uh, of water, fertility and patroness of women. Enhance your day when you wear Anahita and enjoy its therapeutic scent. That's totally true, like I swear, I'm not sponsored on anything. Um, Fruity notes of peach and lemon. Oh, pe oh, so that's peach that I love so much in it. I would never guess. I literally, I would never guess. Peach and lemon leads to a white floral, floral heart of carnation. That's my favorite flower. And the ylang ylang. Interwind this magical fusion with spicy clove notes. How do you say clove? Clove? Clove, I think. The final touch of Anahita unfolds into an accord of sandalwood and cypress oil. Wow. Gives a lasting individual scent you love to wear. Oh yeah. They're not lying. The fragrance is as much about expressing our individual personality as it is about the scent. Anahita is representative of a powerful woman. What's very in this case, women choosing to stand up for animal rights! Oh my god, that's like, that's so weird. That's like, weird, right? A woman who chooses ethics about all else. Try Anahita again. Oh my god, this is so me. That's why I love it so much. Oh my god, this is, this is mad. Whoever the creator is of this perfume that was spot on. And I'm so surprised that what I smell so comforting is the peach. It is peach. And now I know. And now I can actually this distinctive. Uh, it's now become distinctive that it is peach. Love it. 
I'm going to tell you about compassion as well. <laughs> Let me cool down a little bit after that Anahita <laughs> uh, description. Compassion. This one is also very nice. It's definitely second best after Anahita for me. But this one is something I would wear for like an elegant occasion. I would wear this one every single day as my um, official scent, like my, you know, how do you say it? My signature scent. That will be my signature scent, I'm sure of it now. Um, and this one I would have for special occasions like um, Easter or somebody's birthday because this one is very luxurious smelling it smells mm, it smells fresh and it's soapy but in a great way it's like it's a lot of lemon in it I think it's very citrusy in a very luxurious way like Sometimes luxurious hotels smell like this, I think. Let's see what it says on their website. This one reminds me of um, Chanel 5 um, Le, Lo. Chanel 5 Lo. Mm -hmm. I have so many literally. Oh my god. One, two. It's five, they have 12, they have 12 um, fragrances for women to choose from. Compassion. Let's see what they say. Sophisticated fragrance for all seasons. Ha! Told you, sophisticated. Yalang Yalang takes the lead in this creation and skillfully accented by notes of lemon and a touch of ginger. Enriched by tones of copaiba, whatever copaiba is, vetiver and amber. A scent that captures the essence of compassion. Favorite time to favorite scent to wear from daytime through evening for weekends and special occasions. When you're looking for a new statement, perfume, try compassion. Try fashion may come and go, yet this classic fragrance will always emphasize your personal style. It's definitely classic, like Chanel. Uh, British made, ethically produced, vegan. Will last for hours, and yes, that's true, last for hours, but mostly on the hair as well, like on a heater. So, spray your hair and you're good. I mean, obviously it's, it stays on the skin as well, but don't get me wrong, it stays for a few hours, I say 2-3 hours on the skin, but on the hair it stays, at least on my hair, I can literally say it stays up until I wash it again. So, I love it. So happy to find my scent, um, that's why I wanted to share with you. So probably <sighs> these will be my two forever favourite. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it, if you know any great cruelty free and vegan perfume uh, please let me know, comment on the video, like it if you liked it, ring the bell, press everything you want to press, just the, the like button of course, you know, not that, not that this like, I don't know what it's for, and never mind, have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.